and I think attendees will be able to come in soon. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wonder if we should wait a second for people to come in. We are recording. I'll just cut this in the beginning. <clears throat> there we go. So people starting to come in. Awesome. All right. It's one o'clock and it's a Thursday in February. So that means it's CTE week again, live in the lab. We're doing it this time in video production and interactive design. So I'm super excited to show you a lot of cool things. We have some amazing guests today with me. And this is going to be, again, one of our great series, uh, uh, a continuation of our great series. So I'm excited. I'm going to let you introduce yourselves and then we can get this going. Hi, I'm Rich Axley. I'm the instructor uh, for a video production specialist program. We have degree programs and we have diploma programs. We're on the Brooklyn Park campus. And I'm Sydney Saunders. I'm a second year student and I'll be graduating around this winter time and I'm in for video production. Okay, so we're in the studio right now. We'll take a tour in a little bit, but as I mentioned before, we have two year degree programs in video production specialist, interactive designer and animation or animator. Uh, and so what we're doing in here, there's a lot of students that come in, they start out with video production, and they say, well, for a couple more credit, credits or a couple more courses, I can take uh, some of the core courses and I can take some other courses and maybe uh, another semester, they can get two degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of core classes that work for all three programs. So it's kind of fun that way. Sid, what are you taking right now? Right now, the classes I'm in are Avid, Nonlinear Editing, After Effects, um, what else? What's, I'm blanking. Oh, I'm in an internship right now, thanks to Rich. So that's been an awesome opportunity. I work with um, CCX Create in Brooklyn Park, and I've gotten to do two live shoots already, which is super exciting because I've never had experience with that before. So it's going to school here has already opened up opportunities for me. I'm loving it so far. So there's a lot of things that um, different students find when they come here. So if you're a visual person uh, and you like movement on the screen, this is your program because we're doing animation, we're doing uh, interactive design, and of course, video production. So a lot of things are moving to social media and it's all about social media. So Companies are not hiring video producers per se, they're hiring social media content producers. So they have to be well versed in some of the social media uh, platforms and the things that we're producing, whether it's graphics or animation or interactive design, how do those things go into a social media platform? And so we're learning all of those things and things are changing and so are we. We're making sure that we're on the latest uh, kinds of software and we're doing the latest and the hottest trends uh, within the field and the industry. So it's a, it's a lot of fun uh, for me because we're, I'm always doing the latest and the coolest thing. So it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. Uh, so some of our producers, I mean, we've done documentaries, we've done music videos, we work with corporations, we work with Snap Fitness, we work with Buffalo Wild Wings, Center Point Energy, we're doing real world projects so students can have real world things on their portfolio. So Sid, you're working on your portfolio right now, aren't yeah. you? Okay, so tell us about how you're going to gather those things and what you're gonna put on your portfolio. So right now, right off the bat, for my portfolio right now, I'm creating a reel, which is basically a combination of basically my work that I've done in school or outside of school. So I was kind of set up to win because I've been involved in a lot of projects at the school. So some of the things that I have in there is we did a PSA here, um, helped out with the Minnesota Rockers, a couple other projects we've done in school that I got to like do some graphics on or color grading and putting that stuff in there has helped me out a lot. So now that I'm like building it all and I know how to edit it, it's getting to professional quality. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in your portfolio, you're going to create a website and you're going to create a reel. And when you leave here, you're ready to put those, that website 
on a link on your resume and they're going to look at it. And especially our field uh, needs portfolio Definitely, stuff. Yeah. And in the old days, it used to be you'd create a tape and you'd send the tape out. Well, that's not practical anymore. Now you send a link and the link <laughs> yeah. is pretty solid and we, we go through it. The students learn how to interview for jobs. Uh, and yeah, that's something we're doing right now. Um, working on something called an elevator speech. So like if you run into someone that you could like help brand yourself with or someone that you it asks you, what do you do for a living? It's something that you have right off the top of your head that you can say, here's my skill set. This is what I do. This is how I can help you out. Stuff like that. That's just making sure you're ready for when you transfer to a job outside of college. So. Yeah. We're learning about resumes, we're learning about uh, business cards, yep. and uh, obviously the website. And so students that leave here, again, I mentioned this before, when students leave here, they're ready to just give a link to a future employer, and that employer then can see their work. And again, we do as many real world projects as we can. We ha have kind of an agreement with the Anoka County Historical Society, and we produce a lot of different uh, videos for those folks. Yeah. This last summer, and we'll get to it a little bit later when we do the tour, this last summer we produced uh, videos for them as well as interactive design uh, uh, programming for a multi-touch table that's in the uh, historical society, but we also have one here that we can test and then deploy there. So we're doing a lot of, they're providing the content and we're providing the creative way that somebody uh, can view that information. So it's uh, that's kind of in the interactive design uh, side. And the animation, of course, we're doing cartoons and we're doing all kinds of cool things, but animation doesn't stop with cartoons or gaming. A company may need a cutaway of a machine and all the, the workings, the moving parts. We, our students learn how to model those parts they learn how to place them in the right location and then actually move as the machine moves uh, in an animation, which is kind of cool. We also have, uh, it's called Rococo, which is a skin tight suit, but it has sensors and it's motion capture. So we're doing some motion capture uh, projects. Uh, and so we could have a fight scene. If Sid had one on, we could do a fight scene and then actually put characters over uh, what we have done, and it would be two characters that we design or characters that you download from the internet. It's really cool. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, how about a tour? All right. And are there any questions before we head out on the tour? I know um, we're, there's gonna be time for questions throughout this entire time. I'm checking the Q&A uh, chat. So if you want to send a question, I'll let uh, Rich know, and he'll be able to answer it, or I'll be able to answer it. So, ready for the tour? Yeah, let's take the tour, okay? So we're gonna be moving a little bit. Uh, so uh, first of all, let's uh, turn around. Come on over here, Sid, we can all do right. it together. So there's two studio spaces here, and this particular studio space has a green screen, mm -hmm. and we also do some motion capture and some uh, stop motion animation here in this area. Oh, yeah. And it's just kind of an open space. If you kind of tilt up, you can see the lights. So we got a lot of lights here. Our students also set up lights, uh, and so there's a lot of things going on in this particular area. Uh, and the three-minute interviews yep. right over there. So we're doing interview product stuff, uh, all kinds of different uh, kinds of video. By the way, we work with DSLRs and video cameras. We're working with lenses, of uh, really nice uh, Zine uh, cinema lenses. Awesome equipment here too that because you can, once you're a student here, you can like um, borrow equipment from the school and then bring it back and that, that it's just awesome because you have industry grade equipment that you can use that's right. available. And she's finding that out in the internship. They have different equipment than yeah. what we have, but it's similar with the workflows of capturing the footage mm -hmm. and then bringing it to post-production. So uh, we're working with Premiere Pro and as Sid mentioned, Avid. Uh, but they're working with, what are they working they with? They use Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro, Final Cut at 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so ev everything that she is learning at that internship can be placed on her resume yeah. to uh, get her get her a job later on. So it's really cool that way. 
So that's a little bit. Now let's go over to the other side. I need to walk over here. And, uh, and there you go. Okay, good, good. And let's tilt down just a little bit. Uh, other way. So, uh, my, my fault. <laughs> okay, so this is our studio. And uh, if you look at the monitor in the back, it says, food, what you love. And uh, <laughs> uh, we do a, a culinary show. So the students from uh, the video production program do all of the uh, technical part, and it's a cooking show. It's about a 15 minute long cooking show with the culinary uh, arts program, and they'll have a guest and they'll actually you know, cook something right here on our set. And it's a lot of fun. The students love it. Um, it's live. Yeah, it's live. We go live on Facebook. Uh, so it's, we do a full rehearsal, but then we go for it. And it is how it is. And the students in our intro class really have been rocking the last couple. So we did six uh, in the fall. And Sid, you were in that class. Yeah. To say, Say what uh, what you loved about doing that. Um, for me, I love directing. So being able to direct um, not only a show, but a live show, it gives you a lot of things you don't think about. When things are live, it changes the whole game because you have to act fast, you have to think fast, and you know any mistakes will be seen live. So it gives you kind of that like thrill, and it's really exciting. And when everyone's doing their job, we just have a blast. It's super fun. We chef um, Dennis. He's hilarious, so it's always a fun show to just do. And sometimes we get snacks afterwards. <laughs> so that's always nice too. Yeah, it is nice. And so some of the equipment we have here, we've got uh, three uh, cameras. You might want to back up just a little bit. So it's a multi-cam scenario. So we've got three cameras here. We use this particular camera for close-ups. This particular camera for kind of a two-shot. Uh, and that camera for a single over there. They have teleprompters on them, so students operate the teleprompter. And so in the fall, we do a program called Reel to Reel, which is a uh, movie review program. It goes live, the students write it, and in most cases, they are the talent. Mm -hmm. And so they're learning and writing about visuals, and they're critiquing those visuals critiquing the acting, critiquing the uh, the technical aspects. Cinematography, all that. Yep, so uh, any questions? No, I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, yeah, yeah. good, we'll keep oh, talking. We got one. Oh, we have a chat. Yep, uh, do the courses offer experience or lessons uh, directing? Uh, uh, experience like of- Like we have videography and directing. Okay. Yeah, so um, it, I believe the question was about directing. So the students learn how to direct a studio. So in a, on a baseball team, there are how many managers? One. Uh, the conductor of an orchestra, there's one. only one. And so when Sid is directing, she is running all aspects of audio and video as it relates to the program. So that's who I'm evaluating. The, uh, the students also learn how to operate all of the equipment, but they learn how to direct and they learn how to handle themselves while directing. And there's a different language oh, yeah. that, we, that we use uh, in order for everybody to be on the same page. And so we all have headsets on, we're all talking. And whenever the instructor can get the heck out of the way and let the students uh, <laughs> rock, uh, that's what I do. So. Uh, the students are, are a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch and it's a lot of fun to produce because the students are producing it. So we, we have B-roll where we're actually rolling the clips and rolling the trailers and the students need to know when to put those on and when to take them off. Uh, and so we'll go into the control room in a second just to kind of see what happens here. But this is our studio. Uh, if you could pan over, we'll just keep talking. We've got a pretty cool set here. Um, yeah. So usually for the cooking shows, they're cooking right here, and then this camera straight ahead of me will show this monitor in the back. And then sometimes while they're cooking, we'll have this top-down camera show what they're doing on the back screen, or we'll throw up some pictures when we're talking about it so that 
um, people who are watching can get some background and know what we're talking about. So yeah, it all comes together and it looks really nice. And uh, I'm just uh, changing. Adjusting the colors. lights. Yeah, all these change different colors, intensity. It's pretty cool. You can set different types of mode, like moods with it. You can even do two colors at a time. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so the students, uh, the students kind of pick and choose what their colors are going to be when they do their show. And as you can see, there's a monitor in the back. And so it's live, so the students watch the trailers or the clips while it's going on, so it's not brought to post. So it's all done live. And um, it's a little bit nerve wracking uh, oh, yeah. because you got to pay, pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. yes, but Especially if you're telling, like having, um, helping other people out, it can get like stressful, but it's, it's so much fun though. You know, it's, you're gaining the experience. And then once you do your first one, you're like, oh, well, that was fun. And then your next one's, you know, it's a piece of cake. It, it gets to be like secondhand knowledge, basically. The, um, the one thing um, that we can say for feedback is when a student is done doing a live podcast, the feedback I'm getting is, I can hardly wait to do it again. Yes, every time. So my philosophy as an instructor is, I'm sorry, uh, my philosophy as an instructor is have fun, learn and execute. And so I expect my students to bring in as much fun as possible. Mm -hmm. And they're also gonna learn and they also have to have their game face on. So they gotta do a lot of different things. We have a question in the chat, maybe. What type of careers would, would uh, program participation lead to? So yes. what kind of careers after? So the careers, it's, it's kind of interesting because our particular program is wide ranging. So you can get a job at a hospital, you could get a job at a hotel, you could get a job with CCX, the local um, cable. Live broadcasting. Yep, live broadcasting. The local news stations, there's a lot of post-production houses and production houses that produce video for corporations. Best Buy has Yellow Tag Productions. So there's a lot of corporations, uh, places you can go to get jobs. And the jobs are some of the higher paying jobs in our uh, media careers area. And so it's the students uh, have a, if you're really good, the students uh, get snapped up right away. And as I mentioned yeah. before, social media is kind of where everything's going. Mm -hmm. And so we're making sure that the students are kind of, um, well-versed in you know producing content for social media so yeah all right let's take a look at the control room which is super fun yeah there you go so this is our control room and you can kind of see and we'll we'll pan around uh so you can so let's uh, tilt up there you go and Go ahead and spin it around. You can see all the monitors. And you can see the monitors. So you can see the outputs of all the cameras. And Sid's going to sit in the director chair. And we have these really cool gaming chairs that we sit in. They're, yeah, they, everyone loves them. <laughs> they, can hardly, they can hardly wait to get in this room. So Sid is in the director. So she would be sitting here. And she would be directing everything that's going on. We have a microphone for PA, but in most cases she's got, in all cases, she has a headset on, she's communicating with the camera operators and all of the, uh, the teleprompter operator and the audio and, and everything. So yeah, this, is, this so is a really cool room. Yeah. When there's talent um, out there and we're not live, I'll speak through here to give them directions or count down. And then I put this on, and so everybody who has these on can hear me speak. And that way I can talk to everybody on the set without my voice being heard over a loud microphone during live events. So yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so if we could pan this way, there you go. So this particular uh, computer, and I'll get this out of the way, there you go. This particular computer is called B-Roll. And, and all they have to do is they have, it's a touch screen. So when they hit the touch screen, uh, stuff moves, there we go. And you can kind of see this is the opening of our show. And it's really clean looking. Um, and so Dennis Gurnev is the, 
is the uh, uh, the chef and that we're working with. So when we're calling for B-roll, I mean, we, we hit things and, there you go, hit, there you go, and things start playing with audio. So audio is sent then to the audio technician and uh, the audio technician then adjusts levels with its microphones and, and all kinds of different stuff, uh, different uh, audio that might take place, music and, and uh, video, uh, audio from videos, yeah. This particular one, if we pan over, this is called Wirecast, and this is where we go live, and so everything is run into this particular computer, and then we uh, send it out. We actually can put uh, uh, lower, lower thirds. thirds if we want, so everything's programmed here. So the students know how to do this stuff, uh, and they know how to send stuff out and you know make changes and do whatever needs to be done for a live program. And then if you go to the that way, we've got our audio board. And so the audio technician is there. So this studio is, uh, yeah, let's kill the audio. There you go. Um, this uh, studio is two years old. Uh, so we used to be in a completely different space. And so we doubled the amount of space and we kind of designed it in such a way uh, that it would uh, really uh, enhance production and it was real easy to, to do. So the collaboration between culinary and uh, video production is a new collaboration, uh, but it was made possible because we have a newer studio and we have a really good instructor that's really interested in presenting. Yeah. And so the students that's gonna be part of the culinary program is the students need to present their work and present how they're creating things. So we're now uh, in a situation where we're helping other programs with our video production. Yeah, because they, they cook a bunch of stuff and they want some, well, Dennis in particular is super excited about the show. He loves it. He's a very outgoing guy. And basically what they make then with our video, they can also show that to their future employers. So it's also helping them out as well. So yeah. Good. Um, so uh, let's move on to the nonlinear edit lab. Ambiance. This is our nonlinear edit lab, and the Every student pretty much has their own computer whenever they're working on stuff. Nonlinear editing is things like Avid, Premiere Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro. So we teach Avid and Premiere Pro in here. So basically what we've got is we've got a lot of projects where we, the students learn how to capture footage on a DSLR. Well, we've got to edit that footage. And so we're gonna take that footage, we're gonna offload onto these computers, we use Mac computers in here, and then we begin to edit. So the sooner I can get my students editing, the sooner they're going to be able to do single cam productions and documentaries and music videos and things like that. So uh, earlier today I wrapped a uh, course, uh, uh, meaning wrapped, I mean I finished uh, teaching a course called digital post-production and today we were learning about audio and how to how to s use some audio for sound design and special yes, effects and yeah. really cool stuff really cool so Sid uh, I think you were in here second semester mm -hmm. and so she had had intro to video but then she took second semester in uh, yeah. digital post in the second semester in addition to other courses. Mm -hmm. And so she's now an editor. She's comfortable, she can walk up to any machine and she yes. can capture footage and bring it and bring it to post and know how to edit and know how to deliver, mm -hmm. which is the most yeah, important. Yeah, convey your message, that's, that's the biggest thing. And once you become an editor too, it makes going out and shooting so much easier. You understand like, oh, this is the shot I need to get. This is what it's gonna look like once I bring it into post. And at first, like you see these programs, these editing programs, and you might be intimidated, but 
um, once you learn them, it's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I can do basically anything in the software. It's, it's pretty cool. So Sid was part of a class uh, this fall, which was video field production. So we went and we went to downtown Anoka and we captured footage of the Anoka ghost tour. So our client was the Anoka County Historical Society. So obviously with COVID, you can't necessarily have a whole lot of tour groups. So they wanted to have a digital version that they could charge money for and help uh, defray costs with the historical society. So Sid was part of a group that went out and shot footage, a particular topic, then brought it back and edited. So boy, how many different locations was uh, or site oh, scenes? Oh, wow. There's, Is there like 15? I was going to say more than 10 for sure. So we went out to all these places and captured and did some stand up. So we actually had some talent uh, that presented the particular so say you're standing in in front of a house that might be haunted they would talk about that but then we would bring in all of the other uh, assets such as still photos and uh, footage yeah, yeah b-roll mm -hmm. so sid did one uh area which was the the jackson hotel yes which uh turned out really cool so let's tell them a yeah, little bit about the, so jackson. the jackson hotel basically what I had to do was, what they talked about was a dude named Char Charlie Jackson. He had kind of an, like, he was a little bit promiscuous and had um, some girls come down. Well, one of the girls went missing. So they thought it was like a rumor that she was walled up in the, um, in the walls somewhere of the Jackson Hotel. So what we did is we went and got some footage of the Jackson Hotel. And then for me, when I brought it to post, I was like, well, we don't really have like a girl. He's talking about this girl that disappeared. Well, we don't have any footage of that. So then I stepped in and got my own footage and I played the girl and it all worked out awesome. Everybody did really good because when we went and shot, we went and got some shots Then we brought them into post and then we were like, okay, here we still need some more. So then we went out and shot the rest of it. And then we had all this B-roll footage and it all worked out. Is awesome. It was a great, so she had to convey that story. So you had to get footage that related yeah. to the story and how to tell that story. And and each segment was maybe two or three minutes long, maybe yeah. even a little bit longer in some cases. Mm -hmm. But you had to tell that story, the you know, so we can then move on to the next site. But the the client, which was the Anoka County Historical Society, really loved what we did. Yeah. Uh, everybody. Um, Seen everybody to, got their own part in it too everyone was editing something everyone got their own segment so now that that's out there i can say oh well yeah that's my video i did the jackson hotel for anoka historical society it's pretty cool bragging rights <laughs> yeah and it's portfolio worthy yes and exactly so then we also submit to the natas which is the national academy of television arts and sciences and so we have uh, won many awards uh, with that organization. It's the chapter is the Upper Midwest Emmys. And so the students don't win an Emmy, they win a Crystal Pillar Award, but the Emmys is part of the organization. And so we submit those things. We compete with St. Cloud State, the University of Minnesota, the five, any, any four-year college in the five state area that has video production or film. Uh, we compete and win, yeah. uh, which is really cool. So we're right there with the other colleges in the five state area. So it's really cool. So this is our nonlinear editing uh, air area. We've got 13 computers, a nice small class, and uh, the students uh, are right here uh, working and I can see what they're working on and how they're doing things. And uh, my teaching method is I project on the screen Students know when to look at me, and then they know when to look at their screens and actually uh, perform, you know, what we're what we're doing with the software. So next, I can show setup too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. So we have two setup. monitors. So you can. Let's see. Is this on? You can when you're editing. It's very helpful to have two monitors because on one big screen there's a lot going on. So sometimes I'll take parts of my project 
and throw it on this screen so that I have more room and I can add more effects and just see my workflow better. So it's really helpful. Um, these computers are super fast. When I go from this to my laptop, it, there's a big difference. These are always right on the dot for anything I need to do. And we can also save our work on these. We have to be a little careful with the deep freeze, but here, let me see if I can open up for me. Right here, just let me open up Avid. And so while she's opening up Avid, um, the students learn how to control uh, the software and they also learn how to work with the real estate of the monitors and, and different things. So they're they're learning and when they go home, if they've got a laptop, it's it's uh, makes it a tough deal because everything's <laughs> yeah. on one screen. So they kind of get spoiled a little bit, but that's the way uh, most people are editing now. They've got multiple monitors. I've been mm -hmm. seeing as many as three monitors. And so if the computer can handle it, it rocks. So, um, yeah, because these are such up. powerful computers that when I'm working on my projects, there's never like, it rarely ever glitches or anything like that. And then if I were to like transfer to like my PC or a lower grade computer, I could sometimes run into problems, but usually not that much. But these, I always just bring my work here usually and get it done because it's just so much faster and easier. So we're a program that, um, teaches some things online because of COVID, uh, but we are hands-on. And what that means is if you wanna learn how to operate a camera, you pretty much gotta have your hands on. And so there are several programs at Hennepin Technical College that give us the ability to have uh, uh, in-person teaching. And so that's what we do here. And even with the application software, we've tried producing things uh, or, or teaching things rather uh, with application software. And it's really, really difficult if the student does not have similar software at home uh, and, and, and Zoom. So what works best is if they come in here and they edit, we social distance and we do all of the- uh, Clean everything we, as well. We clean before and after, and uh, we also uh, obviously wear masks. Good so- Question two. Yes, question. Max, right? What if a student have a PC? Yep. So uh, the question is, if we have Macintosh here, and what if you have a PC at home? And the, the good news is about Avid or Premiere Pro is everything works with the same project files and footage files. And so even if you have, you start a project with a Mac, you can take those, that project file and the footage files and bring it to a, a Windows machine and that will work. Uh, and so it's really cool right, that way. Yes, Everything's yeah. kind of converged for Mac and, and Windows. Uh, but in here we have Mac uh, computers. Now in the lab we're about to go into, those are boot camp. So we have the ability to have a Macintosh computer and a Windows environment with some of our Windows software. And then another question was how many students in each cohort? Well, uh, you know, it, it depends on the class. So this class here, I do not want to have a Mac. I don't, don't want to have any more than 12. There's so, it's so intense and there's so many things going on with the application software that we need to maintain focus. But there are other application uh, software classes, After Effects. Yeah, uh, After Effects, we have like 20 something. 20, in our yeah. Class. yeah. yeah. And so there are lecture and hands-on courses, lecture lab courses, some uh, visual communications. Sometimes we'll have as many as 24 students in a lecture, and then we split up in groups and have uh, labs uh, with some group work, and that's doing stop motion animation and different uh, one-shot video uh, programs and, and a bunch of different things yeah. like that in VizCom. Uh, so it's kind of cool that way, yeah. So we're, no. And this is what it looks like with two monitors. So for example, this is Avid. So if I was editing over here and I wanted to, so say he says something, he says, hey, how you doing? I can type, hey, how you doing? Now I can go and bring this in here and I know that this is the clip of him saying that. So it's really nice with two monitors because it just makes it so much easier. I have my workflow here and then my comments over here and it just, I can bring them back and forth. I can bring it to this screen, vice versa. Just makes everything so much easier to work on. 
So uh, let's ask a question of Seth. Uh, tell me about the homework. So most of your homework for, I'm in video production, so most of my homework is done in class. There's, um, for more like graphics and stuff, there's uh, some stuff you have to do outside of class, but usually for video, it's you're working in groups, you're all being creative together, you have to come up with like script writing, director, all that, and then shooting. The majority of your shooting, unless you decide to go off campus, can take place here. We have all the equipment. So basically, if I usually get all my homework done here, or I'll come in separately, and it takes like an hour, less than an hour, and I get it all done. And there's always people here to help out too, which helps me out because sometimes I get a little overwhelmed. But otherwise, the homework outside of here is really just towards your second year more so, coming up with you know, for your real, what have I done that I can showcase to get a job? More stuff like that, career focused with your second year. So yeah. So the other cool thing too, is there's a lot of overlap between the classes, meaning mm -hmm. when we talk about DSLRs and we talk about uh, intro to video and we talk about corporate, we're always talking about the exposure triangle, the ISO, the F-stop and the shutter speed. And those things are really reinforced throughout the whole Thing. So that's just an example of a lot of the overlap, lighting, uh, audio, all of those things are talked about, and then they're talked about again, and then they're talked about again, and so the students really, really become solid in all of the aspects of video production. Question? Job placement rate is good. Yeah, job placement. You know, it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty good, especially these days. Now, yeah. when the economy is not so good, a lot of times students are getting hired for project work. And when the, when the economy's good, uh, they get snapped up real quick. Um, and so it, it just depends on what they want to do. I've had students work at with outdoor video production for the outdoor channel. Uh, and so a company that did that sort of thing, he was an avid hunter and uh, angler, and he was, a, he was part of Bassmasters. And he wanted to do outdoor uh, video production. And so he got an internship with Babe Winkleman Productions and Brainerd, and they hired him just like that. Uh, and so he was flying all over the world capturing footage. Uh, and by the way, a little secret, they catch the fish long before uh, the, the, they do the show. They don't do it They long. don't do it long. <laughs> Otherwise they'd be sitting there for hours and hours. So James, uh, who is the, the intern there, would catch fish in the morning and then shoot uh, you know, the, the talent, and uh, they hook them, and all of a sudden, somebody's got it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a fish that he had caught earlier. They, so they loved him because he could fish, and he could do video production. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So. Another nice thing about this field is even when, if you are struggling to find, like, a job, as in, like, working, like, as an intern or something where you're doing, like, live stuff or behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff, or working on sets. The nice thing about it is you can always be a freelance videographer. You can always get um, somebody do someone's wedding, get, help somebody come up, oh, they need a little logo for their YouTube channel. All that stuff is always, people are always looking for people to help out with that. So you can always do that on the side and make some extra cash as well. Yeah, it's very wide ranging. Uh, and so there are a lot of different places. Everybody, every business right now needs to have a social media producer, yep. every business. And so how do they do that? That's one of the things we're pushing is how a student could walk into a company and be a social media content producer. So again, it's stills, it's graphic design, it's animations, it's video production and writing as well. I mean, writing uh, text. Mm -hmm. So Angie, uh, Angie just yeah, got a job. Got uh, a yes, uh, two days. A couple of days there, yeah. So she's working, I'm not going to mention the company, but she's doing a lot of social media kinds of things. Uh, and it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, a local, uh, it's a local company with a lot of different stores. And so she is uh, doing that for uh, a lot, just the main company, which is cool. So good. Let's go on to the last lab that we have. We're burning. Burning minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then, yeah.
will be shown by the uh, so this is the um, this area here, and you can oh, there you go. So this is a kind of a traditional computer lab, but the computers are pretty high powered. We teach After Effects in here. The After Effects course has been mainly online. Sid, you're in the After Effects course. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. It's online because of COVID, but it's actually really nice because um, there's a lot of people in our program and. The professor that I have is super always asking questions, making sure everybody's caught up when he's going through it. So, yeah. And uh, so in this area, it's the interactive design and animation lab. I mean, the, every, everybody uses all of the labs and they're, they're free to. And so this thing here is a multi-touch table. So this multi-touch table is the exact multi-touch table that they have at the Anoka County Historical Society. So we got a grant for this, they got a grant for theirs. And so the idea was our students would take their content and believe me, the Historical Society is not hurting for content. There's <laughs> pictures Hi. and all kinds of videos and all kinds of things. Uh, and we have the ability then using a program called Intuaface to produce uh, content for this multi-touch table. And what we do is we, uh, do the programming here, and when I say programming, it's not coding, it's usually drag and drop, and it's usually, uh, you know, making things link and do different things like that in different games, and there's different templates. So when we produce these things, we need to test them, and so we bring them over here and we test them. Everything is on the cloud, so you just publish it, it publishes it on the cloud, and then it automatically goes here. And so what this is, is uh, kind of a uh, Anoka Halloween 100 years, uh, 1920 to 2020. Uh, and so what we have here is different uh, games. So this is the annual Halloween button. So there's like hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Well, there's over 100. There was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, uh, the students program this. And if I want to see a button closer, I click on it and it comes out. And this is a multi-touch table and I'm just kind of, you know, manipulating it. And I like this one. And let me see what this one looks like. Oops. There we go. And I'll just bring this up here and I can, you know, make it bigger, do whatever I want. So it's great for really seeing and understanding uh, our, uh, you know, how to do things. Uh, it was funded by the Shavlik Family Foundation. It looks like those. Uh, and we've got other co collectibles. So it's a very similar thing. So the Halloween, uh, they had everything from license plates to uh, different uh, things. Yeah. So we, we captured all of these stills and then programmed it into this wheel as a way to display it. So at the Historical Society, they would walk up and see a particular, you know, a particular topic, and they could go into it and see an interactive game and, and how it produces. And we do video with it. We do all kinds of things. And there we go. And so there's some text here, and you can, it's really cool interface, so you can, do all kinds of really fun things. Uh, and here's an example of parades. This is the ghost tours of Anoka. And you can see that this was uh, the ghost tour uh, thing that we had done. And so it, it's an interesting way to present the information uh, to the public. And it's real easy. You just need a finger. Um, and that's, that's all we need. So, anything else, Sid? Um, the posters are kind of cool. Let me grab them. Oh, yeah. Uh, this grab is kind of some of the stuff. Uh, grab sole purpose. Where's that? Uh, right here. I'll grab it. You got it. So, this is kind of the stuff, some of the stuff you can create. These are not actual movie posters but stuff that students created that looked like legit movie posters it's pretty cool so 
This is called Soul Purpose, right? <laughs> and so a student uh, developed this. This is actually the same kid, right? And the idea is, and you can kind of see him laying there on the ground. <clears throat> he lives for one purpose, to beat people to death with his own shoe. <laughs> so he came up with this concept, and it was a fiction uh, idea. Yeah. This doesn't exist. However, the students really love this concept, and so we did a trailer for it in one of our classes. So we wrote the script, we produced it, and uh, made it kind of a horror yeah. movie. So anytime my students can do uh, anything fun like this, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. We, we love doing that. Because the students are interested in visuals and doing really cool things. I mentioned some of the other places that we've worked with, but we work with the Raptor Center at the University of Minnesota where we actually went out and shot footage of uh, the eagles and hawks and, and did some really cool things with, uh, with that. So it was very visual and the students loved it. So um, I get to choose some of the real cool visual things that we do. And as long as I'm having fun, and the students have yeah, we're all having it's all fun. about me and my needs. <laughs> Are there any other questions? <clears throat> Again, yeah, video production, else? interactive design, and animation. Any other thoughts, Sid? Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Not necessarily. It's it's less like of a like kind of college environment than you would think. Like everyone is always like getting along. Since it is kind of a smaller program because of COVID, we're working like very closely with each other in groups and the people you meet here can definitely help you in the field. Like less than a week ago, um, someone I met from my class had asked me to go on a podcast with them. So just little opportunities like that, that come out just by having friends here and doing projects with people. So you can really go far. Yeah. Yeah. Short films, uh, again, documentaries, short films and uh, music videos. Our students are doing all of it in the field. Uh, oh, so, yeah. We also have a club here called Media Storm, which is open to anybody in the school. You don't even have to be in our program. Anybody interested in video, animation, all that. So right now we're working on updating our school commercial. So anybody who's in the club, we get to have fun working on the school commercial. And then after it's completed, we get to say, yeah, we created that, you know, and that goes on our portfolio, which helps us get a job. So it's all interconnected. <laughs> That's... I mean, is there more? Of course there is, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. um, if you, again, if you like visuals and things moving around the screen, that's our deal. We, we love doing that. Okay. Yep. So that's another great live in the lab session. We have another one scheduled for next week with business, but I want to thank both of you all for giving yeah, us thanks. a great, great uh, presentation and visual of what our actual classes look like. Again, this is all about CTE month. So technical education, putting your hands on and doing things in our classroom. And that's exactly what Hennepin Tech represents, but also other colleges as well. We just get the opportunity to show off our awesome faculty and students and our labs. So if there's no other questions and I don't see any in the chat, that's gonna be it. If you do want to get more information or reach out to Rich, um, his contact information is on our website right under their program. So definitely check out that if you can. Have a great day.